The sun, the moon, and the earth, the medicine wheel, the round dance, and the dream catcher. All circles, all circles of life. What goes up will come down. What you give away will always come back to you. In all things there is balance. For every right there is a wrong. For each of the sacred teachings there is a deceiver. At a time before distant religions and churches came with their teachings, their commandments and their seven cardinal sins, we knew. We knew the way of the good red road. We knew the right way to live, not through commandments, but through sacred teachings, teachings that were given to us long before their arrival. And we knew that we would be tested by seven deceivers, what they called seven cardinal sins. We knew because we had been forewarned. And when these distant churches arrived on Turtle Island, on our North America, with their teachings, their relics, and their symbols, we had our own. One was the dream catcher. Sometimes Breath Giver comes to us directly, as he did with the teachings of White Buffalo Calf Woman. On other occasions, Creator sends for us, as he did when we were brought before the Seven Grandfathers. More often, however, Creator sends Trickster to guide and help us find our way along the Good Red Road. And though Creator has given us the freedom to make our own choices in life, He intervenes when necessary, but only when necessary, during a time of great crisis and need. It was during such a time that we were gifted the sacred pipe. It was during a time of great need that we were taught how to build and use the sweat lodge. The great flood occurred at such a time, and it was during a time of crisis and great need that our guide, the trickster, came and gifted us with the dream catcher. Hey, uh, hi, uh, hi, uh, hi. Long before our grandmothers were young, greed, corruption, and malice had taken hold of Turtle Island. It was at this time that an Anishinaabek youth began the fourth day of his vision quest. As custom dictates, this young man had little with him, a robe to fight off the cold, tobacco for offering, sweet grass and sage for purifying and cleansing. Pure of mind and heart, the youth sat on the bank of a dried out creek crying for a vision. His eyes were closed and his heart was open. An onlooker might have thought him alone, but he was not. Trickster was there next to him, whispering in his ear. The boy stood and began scanning the blanket of Mother Earth. He picked up a long green twig and shaped it into a circle. Using a strip of leather from his moccasin, he tied, then hung the hoop on a branch of a small sage bush. He then watched Grandmother Spider step out of the tall grass and begin climbing the hoop. With ease and grace, she made her way to the top, and from there, she spoke to him. Grandson, you know my voice. You and your people heard me when I told you to look to the seven sacred directions for my teachings. You heard, you listened, and all was good. But lately, you've been hearing other voices. Elder Spider spun her web as she spoke. You're hearing voices that are not mine. Now is the time for you to rely on the wisdom you learned from Amik. Use that wisdom to distinguish these voices from mine. Look to Makwa for the courage you will need to resist them. What goes up will come down. For each right there is a wrong. For each of my teachings there is a deceiver. These voices are those of seven deceivers. 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 On a fine silky thread, Trickster lowered herself toward the center of the hoop. With her gaze fixed on the young man, she spun, moving eastward. Start every day under Father's sky, looking east, up at your grandfather, the sun. Is he not majestic, 
powerful. Do you need more than that to remind you how small and pitiful you are? Did I not tell you to look to Wolf as the example of my first teaching, that of humility? Yet you hear a voice telling you that you are better than others. This voice is telling you that you should stand tall and proud and let others know how good and how special you are. That voice you are hearing is that of pride. Pride teases and intrigues you. Pride would have you believe that you are better than your neighbor. Pride would have you impose your views and your values on that neighbor. Pride would have you make war against him. Grandson, being proud of who you are is not wrong, but understand that you are no better than others. You are all equal in the eyes of Creator. Do not listen to pride. Do not allow it into your heart. Look instead to Wolf, to Maigan. Be humble. Do as he does. Bow your head in reverence to your Creator, to your elders, and to those who are weaker than you, to those who have less than you. Live by my teachings, and, and all will be good. Grandmother Spider continued spinning, moving southward. When you travel south, you will be in the prime of your life. You will be strong, capable, and wanting to achieve great things. On occasion, you will want for that which is not yours. Your desire will be so strong that you will lie, cheat, and cause hurt. The voice that you will be hearing is that of lust. Lust will drive you to want so badly that it will drive you insane to the point of doing things you would not otherwise do. Do not listen to lust. Be honest with yourself about what you have and about what you need. Look to Raven, Gagagi, who succeeds and thrives with what he has been given. He's bright, alert, and always conscious of the gift Creator has given him. He does not lust for that which is not his, nor should you. Be honest with others and with yourself. Do not lie, cheat, or steal. Know that you have enough. Be satisfied. Then be thankful. Offer tobacco and thanks. Trickster inched her way westward. You were hearing the voice of another, the cousin of the deceiver lust. Beware of this one. Beware of envy. When you travel west on your journey through life, you will have achieved much. You will be happy with who you are because you will be humble and you will be honest with yourself. You will have recognized the gift you have been given and you will have achieved much. On your journey, you will have seen many who are smaller and weaker than you, yet there will be things they possess that you were not given. Do not envy others. You have enough. Buffalo is the largest and strongest among you. Buffalo offers himself to you so that you might survive. Do you envy his strength and beauty? Do you think Buffalo is less worthy than you? Do you think Creator favors you over him? Of course not. You understand that he is your equal. You understand that you are related. You are all related. Did I not teach you that when hunting buffalo, you should take only what you need? Did I not teach you not to waste? Show him respect by leaving tobacco and by not wasting. This is good. This is right. This is respectful. Grandson, look to the West and remember this teaching. Shut out the voice of envy. Can you imagine the destruction Makwa could cause if she chose violence, aggression, and wrath as her guides? She does not. Bear has the courage to suppress the voice of the deceiver wrath, and so must you. By the time you move north in your journey, you will have learned from wolf, raven, and buffalo. You will understand what you've been given. You will have been grateful, and you will have lived your life based on that gift. The landscape you now find yourself on will be white. Your hair will be white. You will have known pain and pleasure, and you will have seen much wrong, much that angers you. Grandson, 
even with all you have learned, it is not for you to pass judgment. Yes, you will see wrong that causes suffering and hurt, and yes, you could respond with violence and wrath. But it is not for you to do so. Be courageous enough to accept that all Creator's children are on a different journey. They too are learning. Be strong enough to accept this truth. Look to Makwa for strength and courage. Listen to her. Do not follow the lead of Rav. There is another among them, one whose name is Sloth. Sloth would lead you down the path of comfort and laziness. Sloth will tell you to lie back, relax, and do little with the gift you've been given. Shut him out. Look toward Father Sky and think of Amik. Learn from Beaver. You work as hard as Beaver does, and none understands the way Beaver understands that if she does not use the gift Creator has given her, she will die. Beaver must work her teeth constantly or they will grow through and she will die. Yes, she works hard, but she also has the wisdom to use her gift. So must you. Use your gift. Learn from Amik and shut out the voice of that deceiver sloth. Trickster's web appeared finished, yet she went on. Grandson, look down at Mother Earth, look at her, and listen to her heartbeat. Is it not the beat you hear in your own heart? It's not surprising. You are from her. You came from her, and you will return to her. She feeds, and she clothes, and she protects you. She provides you with everything you need, and more. She is there for you to use, not to abuse. There is one who would have you take and take and take some more. Take of your mother, yes, but always put back that which you do not use. Always replace that which you have taken. If you do not, there will be nothing left for your children. Your mother has much to give you, yet when it is gone, it is gone for all time. This is true. Learn this truth and live by it. Look at Turtle as she moves slowly across the breast of Mother Earth. Think of Mother Earth as Turtle Island. Know that she has limits. Do not strip your mother bear of all she has. Do not deface or abuse her or soil her beauty. She has given you all she can and all she is. Use her wisely as you use the gift you have been given balance, courage, wisdom, and truth. Gluttony has no limits and no place in your heart. The wise old spider hung motionless in the center of the hoop, suspended by a single thread. Of the seven deceivers, greed is the most dangerous and the most alluring. Grandson, you must fight greed with all your heart. Your journey along the good red road should be one of giving, not taking. This is love. Only when you are honest about what you have and about who you are, only when you are satisfied with your gift and respectful of others, only then will you be capable of loving yourself and then loving others. Fight greed with love. Look to Eagle. She is there high in the sky, close to Creator. Look within yourself, into your heart. Eagle will be there, and so will I. Grandson, take this hoop back to your village. Hang it near your resting place. I gift it to you. My webbing will entrap those voices that are not mine. I have left an opening here in the center to allow my voice to find its way through to your heart. And pointing at the young man's heart, Trickster lowered herself to the ground and quickly vanished into the sagebrush. 
At the end of the fourth day of his vision quest, a young Anishinaabek man stood by his village council fire, sharing a story. In his hands, he held a webbed hoop, the sacred gift to be used and shared by all of Breathgiver's children. Yeah.